Getting to know generate blocks. This video is for people who know how to use WordPress but have not used the Generate Blocks plugin before. I'm using the free version of Generate Press Theme and I'm using the free version of Generate Blocks plugin. I've set my page type to Content No Sidebars. I've set Page Builder Container to Full Width and I've disabled the content title. This is a visual guide that complements the written documentation. The container block. Start every new row in your layout with a container block. Then put headlines, paragraphs and any other Gutenberg block you need inside that container or wrapper block. This lets you divide your page into sections because each container can have its own background image or background colour. The background image or background colour for these containers or page sections can span the full browser width or be contained to any width you choose. Most modern home pages are built by stacking this type of page section one on top of the next. You can place any block inside the container block. You can even place one container inside another. I do that often. For instance, when I want to make a narrow headline. If you want to make columns inside a container, use the grid block. And like any other block, you can place more than one grid block inside the container block. The grid block. You can add a grid block in the same way that you add any other block to your page. And don't forget that your grid should be inside a container. Click the add block button and search for grid then choose one of the ready-made grid options. When you become an expert with Generate Blocks, you can build your own unique grids from scratch. Well, that's for another video. Now, in one of the columns, click the Add Block icon. I'm going to add a headline block, but you can place any block you like in any of the grid columns. Below my headline block, I'm going to add a paragraph block. I do this for each of the three columns in my grid. You can stack more than one grid block in the container block. This button lets me duplicate the grid that I've just made. And if I want to, I can place a headline block between the two grids. The headline and typography settings in Generate Blocks. If you're using Generate Press Theme, you can set the site-wide headline and paragraph settings via the customizer. As an example, if in the customizer, you set the H2 tag to display at 30 pixels, and you set the body tag to display at 18 pixels. When you place a H2 headline or paragraph in Generate Blocks, that headline and paragraph will display at 30 pixels and 18 pixels respectively. There are two ways to change typography settings when using Generate Blocks. You can use the Generate Blocks Container Block or the Generate Blocks Headline Block. When a container block is active, open the Typography tab. It's in the right hand sidebar of the Post Editor. Toggle the Show Advanced Typography option on, then choose a font family and font size. These container block settings will affect all paragraphs inside that container. You can override the container settings by using Generate Blocks headline block inside the container. Choose the headline block, click the Add Block icon, then search for and select the Generate Blocks headline block. Be careful, Gutenberg has a heading block and Generate Blocks has a headline block. You can easily tell the difference because the Generate Blocks headline block icon is blue. In the Generate Blocks headline block settings, open the Element Settings drop down box. Here you can choose to make this block of text a heading 1 to a heading 6, or you can make this block of text into a paragraph instead of a heading. So remember, the Generate Blocks headline block can be used as a headline block 
and as a paragraph block. The buttons block. Gutenberg has a buttons block and generate blocks has a buttons block. The generate blocks buttons block icon has two buttons and it's blue. So it's easy to tell the difference between a Gutenberg button and a generate blocks button. When you add a generate blocks button block to your page, the button you can see is wrapped inside a buttons container block. The buttons block options and settings are context sensitive. If you select a single button, you get one set of options. If you select the button container block, you get a second set of options. You can make a row of buttons, but if you select the stack vertically option, you get a stack of buttons and you can force the buttons to fill the available space in its container by selecting the fill horizontal space option. Each button has these settings, typography, spacing, colors, background gradient and icon. The icon settings let you place an icon before or after the button text. You can also remove the text to leave just the icon, which could be useful if you want to make social media buttons. The block sidebar settings. The settings in generate blocks are context sensitive. They change depending on which block is active. There are settings in the toolbar above the active block and there are settings in the block settings sidebar. There are three important parts to the block editor sidebar. At the very top of the block sidebar, you'll see the icon and the name of the currently selected block. This is followed by a short description explaining what the currently selected block does and why you would use it. Next, you see the desktop, tablet and mobile options. Click each button to make changes that will only affect your layout when viewed on that specific screen size. For instance, if you have a headline with a very large font size, you could set a smaller font size for mobile viewers. Some blocks, such as the image block, do not have the desktop, mobile and tablet options. The next set of options are the options that are specific to the selected block. For instance, if you select a container block in the post editor, you'll see the layout options in the block sidebar. If you select a headline block in the post editor, you'll see the element settings in the block sidebar. If you select the grid block in the post editor, you'll see the grid settings in the block sidebar. And if you select the button block in the post editor, you'll see the button settings in the block sidebar. The tabs starting with typography are also context sensitive. So you'll see different tabs depending on which block you have selected. The tabs you're likely to see are typography, spacing, colors, background gradient, background image, icon, advanced and documentation. You can tell from the names of these tabs what each one does. However, there are some settings that are hidden until you make certain choices. For instance, you have to toggle the background color overlay on in the background image tab before you can choose the background overlay color and opacity in the colors tab. I recommend that you experiment with the different tabs when editing different blocks. You'll soon see what each setting does. The advanced and documentation tabs are different to the rest. The advanced tab enables you to add CSS IDs and classes. If you don't know CSS, you can safely ignore the advanced tab. The documentation tab contains a link to documentation for the specific block that you are editing. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.